In this video I will explain the opening and closing of the voltage gated sodium channel during an action potential. I am Wolfgang Stein and I run the Crab Lab at Illinois State University. Sodium channels play an important part in the communication in the nervous system. All long distance communication uses action potentials that propagate along axons to inform other nerve cells. Action potentials are rapid changes of the neuronal membrane potential. These electrical signals are regenerated many times as they travel along the axon. This figure shows the change of the membrane potential over time when an action potential is recorded in the middle of the axon. Before the action potential, the membrane potential at rest is negative or hyperpolarized. The exact value of the resting potential varies between neurons, but it is often in the range between negative 90 and negative 50 millivolts. During the action potential, the membrane quickly starts to become more positive. We say it depolarizes until it reaches a positive peak potential. After the peak, the membrane potential rapidly hyperpolarizes until it reaches values that are more negative than the resting potential. Finally, the membrane potential slowly returns to its resting value. Voltage gated sodium and potassium channels cooperate to achieve the changes in membrane potential during the action potential. The sodium channels are responsible for the quick depolarization at the beginning of the action potential and they are involved in allowing the membrane potential to return to its resting state. When sodium channels are blocked, no action potentials can be generated and neuronal communication stops, often with lethal consequences. Several toxins, such as the toxin of the fugu pufferfish, block sodium channels and are used by the fish against predators. The opening and closing of the sodium channels determine the flow of positive sodium ions into the cell. The opening and closing of the sodium channel was first described mathematically by Hodgkin and Huxley in 1952, and if you're interested in this description, you can watch our other video by clicking on this link here. The sodium channels have two gates, and I will show a simplified view of the opening and closing of these two gates. One gate is depicted as a green trapdoor facing the outside of the cell. This gate is called the activation or M gate and it is responsible for the quick opening of the channel, allowing the rapid flow of sodium that causes the quick depolarization of the membrane potential at the start of the action potential. The second gate is called the inactivation or H gate and is depicted here in red and as a chain with a ball that faces the inside of the cell. It is called the inactivation gate because it is responsible for stopping the sodium flow after the peak of the action potential permitting the hyperpolarization to occur. Note that the hyperpolarization itself is not due to the sodium, but the result of potassium channels opening. Both gates are voltage gated, meaning that they open or close depending on the membrane potential. Since the membrane potential changes during the action potential, the gates open and close at different times during the action potential. At resting membrane potential, the activation gate is closed and the inactivation gate is open. No sodium can pass the channel. As the membrane potential depolarizes during the action potential, the activation gate opens and sodium can flow into the cell, further strengthening the depolarization. Near the peak of the action potential, the inactivation gate closes, preventing further sodium entry. The channel is now in its inactivated state. As the membrane potential hyperpolarizes, the activation gate closes again. This does not affect the flow of sodium since the channel is still inactivated. Once the membrane potential returns to its resting state, the inactivation gate reopens, which is called de-inactivation. The channel is now back in its original state, ready for the next action potential to occur. The reason these changes in channel conformation occur is the change in the membrane potential during the action potential. I will discuss them separately for each gate. This graph shows the open probability of the activation gate over the membrane potential. The resting potential is towards the left and the peak of the action potential is towards the right. Higher values in the y direction correspond to higher probability of the channel to open. As you can see the curve is sigmoidal with low open probability at the negative membrane potentials and high open probability at depolarized membrane potentials. The plot does not show the state changes of one gate or one channel, but rather the probability of the activation gates of all sodium channels in the membrane. As you can see, the curve is no step function, which means that not all gates open at the same membrane potential. There is no threshold. 
This is why we plot the probability rather than the states of the individual gates. So as the member potential depolarizes, the activation gate opens and stays open throughout the depolarized phase of the action potential. It closes when the membrane potential returns to the potential at which the gate had opened. The open probability of the inactivation gate is a mirror image of that of the activation gate. As the membrane potential depolarizes, the open probability decreases. This means that at resting potential the inactivation gate is open. As the membrane potential depolarizes, the inactivation gate will close. Inactivation gates reopen when the membrane potential hyperpolarizes back to the resting state. Beside the voltage dependence, there are also other differences between the gates. The kinetics of the inactivation gate are, for example, much slower than that of the activation gate. This means that the response of the inactivation gate to the membrane potential changes will be delayed. Since this gate inactivates the channel, slower kinetics lead to a longer open state of the channel at the beginning of the action potential and to a prolonged inactivation after the action potential, keeping the channel inactivated for some time, although the membrane potential has already returned to its resting value. This period of time is called the refractory period because no action potential can be elicited when the channel is inactivated. As the open probability of the inactivation gate increases over time, action potentials are also getting more likely again. Let's put this all together. I will now show four sodium channels plus the changes in membrane potential and the changes in open probability as the action potential unfolds. Please pay particular attention to the slightly different gate openings and closings of the four channels. In general, you will see the four different states of the sodium channel. Opening of the activation gate, closing of the inactivation gate, closing of the activation gate, and opening of the inactivation gate. Let's look at this again. And again. And this, in a nutshell, shows the conformational changes of the fast voltage gated sodium channel during the action potential. If you're interested in how to model the actions of the sodium channel in a computer simulation, click this link here. Thank you for watching.